بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہمارے اسٹوڈنٹ وی ول کنٹینیو دی اسٹالوجی آف دا اورل کیوٹی ناؤ ٹو ڈے وی ول گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ وتھ ٹنگ یو آل نو دیٹ از دی ٹنگ از دی کریٹسٹک اسٹرکچر فاؤنڈ ود ان دی اورل کیوٹی مینٹ فار اسپیچ پرپز and deglutition movements of the food particle within the oral cavity it consists of mass of interlacing skeletal muscle covered by mucous membrane the epithelium is the stratified squamous non keratinized lamina propria consists of connective tissue with serous glands adipose tissue and underneath the tongue is the covered by oral mucosa certified squamous non keratinized a a v shape shaped line a v shaped line a v shaped line shallow groove the sulcus terminalis divide the tongue into anterior two third and posterior one third a v shaped sulcus which divides the tongue anteriorly and posteriorly anterior is two third whereas the posterior is one third mucosa covering the upper surface of tongue is thrown into numerous projection called the lingual papilla under surface is smooth mucous membrane having the frenulum opening of the sublingual and submandible gland Now this is the diagram, anatomical diagram describing the shape as well as the location of various papillae along with the taste areas of the tongue. Now look at the picture, the margin and on the tip is the fungiform papillae, middle part. The middle part is the composed of filiform papillae whereas the circumbellate papillae are located mostly in close to the V-shaped sulcus. So this is the location of lingual tonsil, palate and tonsil on either side or lateral side. The area for taste sensation bitter is most posterior close to the v-shaped sulcus the sour tasty taste of the tongue that is on the middle of the lateral part whereas salty is anterior lateral part whereas sweet and salt of the anterior most at the tip so these are the location of the taste sensation carried by the nerve afferent nerves from the taste bud toward the higher center the stately nuclei the papilla you now these are the projections of the epithelial and the lamina propria because and the lamina propria in the posterior one third there are no papillae but there are lymphoid follicles in the form of a nodule like and these are called as lingual tonsil the three types of papillae are visible fungiform that is mushroom like filiform thread like circumbellate that is the basket shape or cat or saddle shape foliar papilla is the variety which is uncommon in human now this is the diagram of the filiform papillae look at the picture the epithelium is stratified squamous non keratinized but the apices of this filiform papillae they are of keratinized epithelium because they are on constant rubbing and friction that is why the nature has provided it a thick epithelium along with keratinization the lamina propria is visible beneath the filiform papillae quite obvious it is made up of connective tissue element
No, this is the next slide of the fungi form papillae. Fungus mean like fungus. Globe shape. Fungus like. You know, over there you see this is the globular formation. Study first came as epithelium. Lamina propria is present beneath it. You know, this fungi form papillae is also present on the upper surface of the tongue. This is the shape of a circumvallid papillae, most common in the V-shaped sulcus. Characteristic feature, it is the mushroom-like, having the numerous taste bud with associated von Ebner's glands. Now, this is the picture of a von Ebner gland, arrow is demonstrating. No gland ducts open into trenches mean these are the fissure between the circumvallate papillae over it the secretions of the one of the glands pour into it these are multiple taste buds concerning for the various types of taste so typical feature study for schemas epithelium lamina propria containing protective tissue along with bone and gland No, lamina propria contain all component of collective tissue. Collagen are type 1 and type 3. Muscle layer is in different three layer. All are skeletal. Always remember, in the tongue, the muscles are skeletal because it is voluntary muscle. You can control by your own movements of the tongue. So, all the muscles will be of voluntary muscle. The lamina propria is quite visible, containing blood vessels, nerve plexus, Collective tissue, cell, and, co and collagen fibers of type 1 and 3. The epithelium is stratified, squamous apex, cretinoid, the rest is the non cretinoid, filiform papillae in this picture is quite visible. Now, next we slide move. This is the bone and the gland because uh, in the previous slide you, you heard the word bone and the gland. What are these? These are the serous serous gland lies in the lamina propria. What is serous? That the excretion is thick, containing enzyme. That is why it is called as a serous gland lies in the lamina propria of the tongue. Ducts open into the trenches of the circumvallate papillae. Uh, I have demonstrated you trenches are the depth of the circumvallate papillae from where the ducts open inside it and pour the excretion within the Trenches, so this gland is serious type. This creates lingual lipase. You look at the picture, so not the picture, but this lingual lipase is the enzyme which is concerned for the breakdown of the the lipid molecule that is the triglyceride. Further, it prevents lingual lipase, prevent, prevents the hydrophobic layer over the taste bud. Very important function. Because this hydrophobic layer, if it is present on the, the opening of the taste bud, so the taste will become vanished. To prevent that, the lipase act and there is the uh, prevention of hydrophobic layer. They help to propagate proper gustatory impulses and lingual lipase is active in stomach to digest 50% of dietary triglyceride. No, this is the picture, histological picture of a von Ebner gland. No, these are the circumvallate papillae lined by the stratified squamous non cretinized epithelium. These are the trenches moving inside the lamina propria, surrounded by the serous glands, and their ducts open in the trenches. Trenches. These are the various ducts open into trenches for the excretion. So this is the lamina propria. The glands are located within the lamina propria. This slide is self-explanatory. Now look at the picture of the taste bud because you have seen in the taste bud in the circumvallate papillae. Now this is the hypothetical diagram to, to make you understand that this is the epithelial, modified epithelial cells present in the form of a of a basket shape. The apical, this is the pore complex with small microvilli over there. This is the pore formation this is the over here the full particle they cross over here and reaches over there and stimulate the impulses so these are the 
receptor cell, taste receptor cell. So these taste receptor cells sense and get apical microvilli and they stimulate when they produce the afferent nerve impulses for gustatory afferent toward the higher center. So taste bulb, taste receptor having a basal cell as well as the supporting cell as well. The basal cell has the potency, it is also called the stem cell, to regenerate the receptor cell as well. Now this is the histological picture of a taste bud, now multiple layer of a cell with the apical apex toward the trenches. Now sensory cells, supporting cell and the basal cells are visible, basket shape, the apical is the microbial life of the taste cell. This is again a large microscopic picture, histological H and E stain. Now in this, you see this is the lumen of the trenches, the circumvalid papillae, and these are the taste pores through which secretions are poured within the secretions are these when the food particle come over there, so they will touch and stimulate the gustatory cell epithelium. So these are the taste buds. You see multiple layers of the these are the taste cell of all which the gastritis cells are stimulant, stimulated with the poor microvilli as you see in the previous diagram. So location is the within the on, on the side wall of the uh, trenches of the circumvalid papillae. The lamina propria, this is all of the lamina propria, multiple nuclei that the fibroblasts and collagen fibers are also there, but this lamina propria contains specialized organ of taste. Now, dear friends, my dear students, now I would like to describe you the very important uh, structure which surrounds the, this uh, gateway of the GIT, that is the oral cavity, the oropharynx. This is called as the Waldia rings of lymphoid tissue. So then this is the natural mechanism or natural system ye lakha ka ka nizam hai ke wo wo opening jahan se ko cheez amne le jani hai toward the GIT or respiration respiratory air passages pe wahan pe lakha ne ye nizam rakha ta koi bhi injurious particle pathogenic particle viruses injurious chemical substances many many things because we are directly exposed to the atmosphere so for this this type of very well efficient system of wall hearing is present all around the oropharynx. What is that? So the lymphoid tissue that's around the opening of the digestive system and the respiratory system form a ring. This is the definition. This ring is made up of lymphoid tissue on the oropharynx as well as the nasopharynx to protect the incoming particles incoming particle in the oral cavity and in the respiratory system. The lateral part of this ring is composed of palatine tonsil. Palatine tonsil on both sides laterally and tubular tonsil around the opening of the lateral wall of the nose that is nasopharynx. This is tubular tonsil in the nasopharynx. Then is the around the opening of the auditory tube in the nasopharynx. This collection of lymphoid tissue is called the tubular tonsil. If you see the posterior pharyngeal wall, the pharyngeal tonsil, it is also called as adenoid. Very well featured, very well known feature in the childhood adenoid. Then is the anteriorly is the lingual tonsil, that the posterior surface of the tongue. This is the anteriorly, but posteriorly is the lingual tonsil on the posterior surface of the tongue. So lingual tonsil, anteroinferiorly, laterally palatine tonsil, supralaterally tubal tonsil, then posteriorly is the adenoid. So this forms a complete ring around the oropharynx as well as the nasopharynx. So it is meant for protection of incoming all types of material, whether inhaled or whether ingested. Dono shaklo mein Allah Ta'ala ne ye ring banaya taaki uski protection ho sake. Again ye diagram hai, is mein aap hoi chizhe dekhenge, dekh rahe hai, pharyngeal tonsil posteriorly, anterior lingual tonsil, both lateral side, 
lapellar tonsil and supralaterally tubular tonsil this is the form the ring or the ring so this is the protection purpose for the incoming particles this is again a drainage area in relation to the oropharynx smooth there are several aggregation lymphoid tissue that constitute the lymphoid the wardy rings so how they drain so nasopharyngeal tonsil look at the picture they will go into the retropharyngeal nodes of the lymphatics all the lymph which drain from the nasopharyngeal tonsil adenoids they will drain into the retropharyngeal tonsil what about the tubular tonsil tubular tonsil will go into either both side retropharyngeal as well as toward the jugular digastric double drainage tubular tonsil jugular digastric and retropharyngeal the palatine tonsil so very well known usually get inflamed so these are drained double in appearance jugular digastric then is the jugular chain of node submandibular nip node submental nip node so all these will drain toward the submandibular nip node jugular chain as well as jugular digastric will as the lingual tonsil will drain into the submental node so all these areas completely covered by the immunological sequence of the various structures they will are having a competency performing the t lymphocyte and b lymphocytes and ultimately drain their respective ter territorial lymph nodes retropharyngeal node jugular digastric submandibular and submental node what are the function the lymphoid tissue surround the gateway of the respiratory and GIT quite obvious because it is the कोई भी चीज़ जानी है तो इस गेट से इस चेक पोस्ट से गुजरनी है तो कोई भी उनको चीज़ को समझ ना आई तो उन्होंने ट्रैप कर लेना है और बिकम खुद दिन फ्लेम हो जाएंगे लेकिन उस चीज़ को जाने नहीं देंगे कोशिश ये करेंगे अगर ह्यूमन या इंसान जो है वो इम्यूनो कॉम्पिटेंट है तो, तो वो उसको जाने नहीं देगा कोई चीज़ भी ऐसी जो कि इंजूरियस है such arrangement meant for the counter action against the pathogen this is very important because this is arrangement and natural arrangement is concerned for the counter action of the various pathogen including bacteria and viruses production of b and t lymphocyte the net result of the in incoming particles pathogens is the production of b and t lymphocyte drainage to the lymphatic nodes because it is the chain sequence so it will ultimately drain into the respective lymph node now we'll come to the clinical aspects and look at the picture tonsillitis this is the diagrammatic presentation how much inflamed and enlargement of the inflammatory process within the tonsil on the bilateral side these are exudate on the surface of the mucous membrane swollen reddish so inflammatory response in the palatine tonsil this is called as include tonsillitis very common in teenage adulthood and and childhood so usually surgeon give antibiotics and various soothing agent to avoid this if they are repeatedly be take uh, be encountered tonsillitis so it will be advisable to do tonsillectomy because it becomes a source of constant chronic tonsillitis the source give to the bacteremia within the blood so they will lead into many complications so far this chronic tonsillitis is thought to be the tonsillectomy is the choice of treatment of choice now adenoids very common in uh, below child below 7 or 10 look at the picture very typical picture of an adenoid face sunken eyes narrow pinched nostril open mouth high arch palate everted lip rhinorrhea loss of nasolabial fold because the nasopharynx is usually obstructed so there will be a mouth breathing in this case in the childhood this is the typical picture of a adenoid phase in the child now this is the anatomical location of the adenoid in the posterior pharyngeal wall closely 
abutting the nasal pharynx, closing the nasal pharynx, os uh, this ostium, so nasal twang, and then is the mouth breathing is the quite a best feature. So this is most common in the below 10. So it is the protective measure. Usually it is it is given in this case the child is given antibiotic and some soothing agent. So this is the anatomy uh, this is the clinical aspect of an adenoid. Now thank you very much. Now we'll move on to the next lecture. Inshallah Aziz, Mr. Thank you so much.